Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so, as you see on the screen right now, so I'm here to present Empathy Driven Design, how Drupal prioritizes accessibility for end users. So I'll be covering the two sections. The first one would be for UX, UI designers, which has to focus on empathy driven design. And second part, yes, as part of DrupalCon, I have to fit into something related to Drupal. That's the reason the second one is all about. So I'm Anam Srinivasan from Accelerant. So we create accessible digital culture. We are your team. So we have an internal framework, which is completely depends upon the accessibility which starts from audit and we go for the recommendations and implement it. So that's where from I am. Yep, so the agenda is first I'll be covering the significance of empathy driven design and accessibility and the practical tips for empathy driven designs. So hopefully we might be using few tools for uh, color contrast and for size fonts and everything. So I'll be giving few suggestions on that, which we have experience. And apart from that, legal and ethical implications of not prioritizing accessibility in Drupal web development. So that is the one important part which I would like to highlight throughout the session. And next is Drupal and accessibility. It's empathy driven approach. I have few demo on the modules which we have used on the sites, which is easily accessible through the Drupal.org. So those I'll be showing it out Q and A, which I'm really worried about it. Let's see. <laughs> All right. So empathy driven designs, this is a very common picture, which we always see that, right? So we have a sympathy towards all the people over here as a person. I have a sympathy, but I'm not sure whether I have the empathy when I'm going for something. So when a project manager gets a new project, he always used to say that put yourself into the customer's shoes and try to get the requirements. We are ready for that, but only on the functional parts. And now as part of accessibility, we need to ensure that inclusivity should be there. So I'm going to start with a failure case study and probably some successful ones later. So Nokia phones, that was a successful in the year of 2000 to 2005. And later it completely got diminished. So what was the reason for that is Android approach those people for embedding the Android features regarding the inclusivity, but they denied it and later Android comes into the picture. And I hope now we are into most of the Android phones and iPhones. So hardly we can see the Nokia. And but recently I had a very good experience, I would say, I have given my iPhone for service. And I ended up in using the Nokia normal phones, which is like a keypad only for three days. I was very much having a difficulty which is away from the social networking first thing. Second thing, I don't have the liquid cash always with me when I wanted to pay something. I got a practice of using the GPays, Google Pays. And I went to a store, I ended up in, okay, I have a GPay, I don't have the liquid cash. Then I realized that I have a mobile of Nokia, which I couldn't. Then the person told me, there is an option to pay GPay from the Nokia. They started utilizing that option. And I paid in the same way. So they realized that change according to the people needs is most important when we work on this era. So this is the one of the best experience which I had. So let's ensure that whatever we develop, whatever we go for any project, any kind of things, whether it's a real time examples, whether it's an online or is it a physical mission which you are developing, ensure that inclusion is on our mind as an empathy, not as a sympathy. That's what I wanted to highlight here. And apart from that, so that's all about the empathy part. Now, when it comes to the accessibility, so when we go to the parks, right, uh, any, any kind of refreshment parks, when we see that they have an accessibility into the picture, very crucial roles. They have the ramps for the wheelchairs. They have the kids play area. They have the walking path pathways has been brought for the older ones. They consider the gateways to hold it if someone cannot walk. So those people are considering accessibility to the core, whereas we have an option to reach out in a wider area through the web and we are not utilizing it. So let's ensure that um, we have to go for empathy driven design, which starts from initial phase of the project. And it's not a responsibility of only the QA or the development team. That's what I want to highlight. Now getting to the next part, I just would like to know how many UX UI designers are there. So probably it'll be more helpful or how many are looking into the color part, color contrasting ratios when we go for a Figma designs. We don't prefer that. 
So that's the one thing which we have to focus on. So there are three levels of conformance level as part of WCAG rules. So when we have to consider the designs, there are three parts, three conformance levels. So one is 1A, level A, and the second one is level double A, third one is level triple A. So I can give you a few scenarios like that. So level A would be like, I'm a person from India, and I like Indian food a lot. So if I'm looking for the restaurants in, inside India, where I live in, I look for the awesome one, where I have to have the real taste one. That comes into level triple A. And if I'm stepping out of my state, some other state, I just wanted to have something which at least I need to survive with a good taste. Then I'll go for level double A. When it comes to the one where I can, I just wanted to survive. For example, past couple of days, I'm going through the same thing. I need something I need to eat, which I need to survive until I go back to India. That comes to the level A. So when you go for the color contrast ratios, we have to consider these scenarios. How much we can fit into the WCAG levels, that is one we have to focus on. And it comes with the branding guidelines with the website which we are preferring. So normally what happens is when we work with the brand colors, so as a UX designer or when, when we start with a project, we will get the requirement where we review the designs, we will get the wireframes and we will re review the designs. The initial part you would be getting is the branding guidelines from the project. So the branding guidelines, which I say is like, it comes with the color for the logo, or it might be the entire background color throughout the website. So those are the things which will be client will be saying, see, I need a blue color uh, and I, I need to ensure that my hyperlinks are in the red. This is the requirement from the client. You might be receiving it. So as a project team, what we have to ensure is we have to check the branding colors, whether it is suiting to the WCAG rules, work client is not aware about it. And second thing is like cost. So when we say something like accessibility, right? And we are telling them like, for the accessibility audit, you might be paying this much amount. Client is like, no, 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 I'm not ready to do that. Why should I have to pay for it? You have to implement it. We have to let them know that it's a one-time investment. So you're going to revamp the entire project. And it's the initial part you will go out and design it. And later it is just the re enhancement part. But whereas if you are going with the fines and settlements with the government, it's not related to nowhere related to that particular amount which you are paying for the audit purpose if it's required. So these are the things which you have to focus on. And as a first step in building accessible color palette, so these are the few tools which I'll take you right now, how you can check it out, the colors and everything. And post that, you can tell the client like, see, this is how we have to design with the colors you have provided. So I'll show a few of the tools over here right now. You have to bear with me, it's on the second screen, so it's a little slow. So if you see that, there is a color coding over here, and you will be able to see what is the background color contrast you have to keep, and also the text size, which is giving the AAA level. So when I say that AAA, that is something like the maximum of conformance level. And if you start removing that palette, so this is the foreground and this is the background, and you can try with different color options over here. And if you see, you can see that the text fails, headline fails. So whatever the text and headlines, if you give into the foreground and background of this one, it will fail the WCAG levels. And it is not visi visible for the most of the people. So this is how we can play with this particular tool. So this is the one of that. The score is really nice. So whatever comes the score, more than eight, it can be confirmed for WCG level and we are satisfying those things. So this is the one of the tool. Yeah, and this one, Figma tool, so most of the team is aware about this. We 
here you can pick them up with the design purpose. So you have a trial out option, you can embed it with the pick bounce you are using, and you can try the color contrast right away. So when the client sees that image. So I'm not sure how many of you regarding this uh, issue was, I mean it's not an issue, probably the differently able person regarding the CEO of Facebook, Mark, he has a red green blind issue. So that's the reason he ended up and he, he will be able to see the blue color in a very much good manner. So if he wants to create the logo of Facebook in a blue and F in the white. So that's one of the reasons. So we have to consider in that way. So the next one is eight shapes contract triplet. This is really a good one, I would say. You can visualize one particular screen. So you have the options over here. So you can go for the colors and show triple A, 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 T, and D and P. So A, 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 T is something like you can have the colors and you can have the contrasting colors in a mild way, but the text should be in a larger size. So that's come to the picture of the sub, I would say it's a subset for double A. So that is A, 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 T. And when you have something called D and P, so if I'm experiencing D and P, if that comes into the picture, so you have a light blue and the text, this will not go. It is a white color, so this will not go, it will have the DMP. So this is a matrix which is prepared in that particular way, which you can wrap over for the, lo I mean say logos or uh, maybe the entire uh, website colors, the background which you want to keep. You can wrap over to this particular matrix, you can play around with this and get the right one for that. And we can go ahead and recommend that to the customer. So how it was implemented. So in the light green, you will be able to see the icons which is in the white. Whereas the white background, I'm not able to see that. We didn't even consider about that visibility over here. So we have to be very, very much cautious of these icons when we are going with an icon for the top one, top three. We should keep the focus on those things as well as part of the accessibility. So these are the few more tools which I have experienced and one is really, a, another one is, so far we were discussing about the fonts and the text. So this is something for links. So if you have the hyperlink on the site, you can go for this. So you can use this tool and you can provide the link color, body text color, background color. So now I have said it in such a way like you have the blue, gray and black, which is the, it's, it's as fast and the link to background is free. So this is the one, and this is in black, I mean it's an ash color, so it doesn't go with that, so it takes, it's free, and the text and the body text is being visible. So this is something which, which you can try for the link, link contrast checker. And the next one is, web and contrast checker. So this is the another one which you have to check for the contrast colors, which is completely for the backgrounds and everything. So you can provide the normal text and large text. It will tell you the conformance levels for the scene, whether it's passed or not, and the contrast ratio. And you can play with the colors over here as well. So this is one of the other tools which has been useful. So this is all about the 
one, which is with the tools, and I will say, so, yes. So, tips to remember for empathy designs. So when we start with the development, we have to have a checklist kind of thing. So I'll show another checklist part of there, so probably I can show that. So these are the points which you have to remember. So establish a color heading structure at the outset. So when I say that establish a clear heading, I would say like H1, H2, H3. So when the person use the keyboard tags, so they should be taken into care like this is the heading, this is the subheading, and this is something like a heading only for this particular paragraph. And this is only for this particular section on the top right or the bottom right. So you should have a semantic head section, heading section. So that's all about the establish a clear heading structure at the outset. Then only the menu link will be properly can be navigated by a person who's using the keyboard or screen reader. So we have to consider that. So maintain an appropriate reading sequence. So when I say that maintain an appropriate, we might be having the jump link on the side. So after the menu, we will have the jump links on the top left and we will have another side block or maybe any other menu block which is we call as a related tax maybe on the right hand side. So if the reading sequence is not being mapped in the right way, instead of the jump links, the person will get enter into the related content section and they will go and hit on the tab over there. So which, take, which will take them to the entire different page. As a person who I can see, maybe I'll be able to identify that but whoever is using the screen reader or the keyboard navigation will not be able to find it out. So that's the second thing you have to focus. Maintain an appropriate reading sequence. That's the one thing. And ensure adequate color contrast, which we have discussed in our past. We can use those color tools, whatever it is. And there should be a color contrast given in a proper way throughout the design. That's the one thing which you have to focus. The next one is opt for actual text instead of text embedded in images. So we might have an, a very colorful, I would say glittering image on the side and we want to give an information to the customer from that glittering image. It doesn't work out. So you have to ensure that there is an alt text or there should be a text image which is kept separately as an image. It shouldn't be an informative text. So that's the one thing we have to focus on that. And apart from that, next one is utilize and educate font size. So when you are using the phones, I, I guess when the phones and whatever the um, tags. So you should be able to respond in text size and which is very common, I think we are, we agree to that. But one thing we have to consider is when we replace the components inside another component. So when you have something like, for example, if you're considering the accordions and if you're placing a paragraph inside the accordions, we may miss in this text size. So if that also should be focused when you place it in that particular way. It should be more responsive that's the one thing. So as part of normal common site, I think now the sites are very much responsive when you're using any kind of devices. But when you place it inside another component, we need to ensure that it fits into the exact size. That's the one thing which we have to focus. And apart from that, the next one is take line length into the account. So when you have the mobile device, we have a 20 pixels of margin which has been applied. And also for the desktop, it's normally the 40 pixels. So when you consider the line length, I would prefer like there is a word which is around 25 characters. We do not want to end up in breaking that in the last half, 15 is on the top, first line. Another 10 is on the second line. Let's not do that. So we should be writing in such a way like we have to consider the line length when we are designing it. That's one thing we have to give to the developers. The question from the developers would be like, okay, tell me how many characters between that particular line. That's one. So it, it is something like we have to focus from the initial phase. And the next one is avoid both extremely long and extremely short lines of text. So when I say the short lines of text, I have a hyperlink which is redirected to some other site and we are not keeping it very much compact. And I wanted to ensure that client knows that you will be landing on this particular page. So there should be a naming given for that particular hyperlinks. When we are giving the hyperlink names, we have to consider this accessibility as well. So those are one section completely we need to focus. The next one is ensure recognizable links. So when a client wants to go to a particular form or when they wanted to submit it, so we, have, we may have a different kind of like, I want my site to be very much unique so that I don't want to use the submit button. I don't want to use the sign up button. Let's use something else. 
<laughs> we need to ensure that certain things has to be informative, communicative, so that the people can understand. So a person, uh, we have an experience on the same thing as like client wants to say that, for example, if we are telling that there is a form which I need to fill it out and I just wanted to ensure when you click here, it will give you the terms and conditions. That's what it was explaining and it was telling that I accept and they were asking, for example, I accept should be a hyperlink and when they click on it, it should show the terms and conditions. Most of us would have been gone through that. We may think, where is the accept? the terms and conditions. I'm able to see the I accept and I am keep on searching for that I accept options. So that is not that much accessible I would say, which we have a pretty much tough part. So that's one thing. Next is design keyboard focus indicators. So design keyboard focus indicators like when you hover on that particular link, there is an option to show that you, I mean, compared to the Mac, I would say Windows is pretty much easier on that. You have the keyboard navigation which will be shown to close whatever it is. So we should be having the keyboard navigation in that particular format so that it will be easy, easily accessible for that community people. Next is include a skip to main content link. So this is something like I entered into the site and I ended up in the navigation. So I would say it might be helpful for the cognitive people who doesn't know that where I am right now in between. They might be focusing within 10 minutes. I might have searched, started searching something on the site. There is a doorbell ring and I just ran over there and I come back, I forgot completely. This is for the cognitive people and I'm not sure where I'm right now and I have to start from the beginning. So in that case, if we have a skip to main content, it will be very helpful. So another thing is like when it comes to the buildings, if you're thinking about the buildings, definitely we will be having an emergency exit because on panic mode, we might be knowing where is the exact door. So we might be searching for that. So And it will be difficult for us to reach on that particular one. So we will go to the emergency door normally. So that is something we have to relate with the skip to main content. And the next one is craft meaningful link text, like click here, read more. But it doesn't mean that you have to use the click here throughout the site. It should be used whenever it is required. Wherever it is required to read more, you have to go for that. So that's something like craft meaningful link text. So the next one is create user-friendly widgets and controls. So you have something called a collection of content blocks, which I want maybe the slide shows. So the slide shows will work in the desktop. When it comes to the mobile, it is we have to prefer like whether I have to see the slide show one another each in the below, or it would be good if we are keeping it as a carousel. So that is how it has to be designed. So we have to ensure that the user-friendly widgets are there. So which, uh, which can easily accessible, something like within a single widget, I, for example, the torch, and the emergency numbers on the mobiles. It's something like it can be easily accessible on the panic mode. So that is something we have to consider. The next one is exercise caution with animation, video, and audio. Of course, everyone likes the video part. When something is there on the site, I, I go like, okay, there is a lot of videos. The graphics are there. It's a graphical representation. It's more informative and it's more attractive. But how much it is being, it can be easily accessed by another people who I'm talking like maybe the visually empowered people or maybe who is having an issue with it is a nice music nice background music but the person who cannot hear it doesn't go well with that so we have to ensure we are considering them as well so that video and audio we should be more 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 cautious on that particular one when we are targeting only the people without any different variable ones I would say so the next one is avoid solely relying on color to convey content. So that is something like if you want to convey, for example, there is uh, some very, very much cautious news is happening. If you go to the NGO site, you will be having an alert bar which is going on. So that is something that we have to focus on that. That color convey, that is what we are talking about here. So what are the information which is being very alert? And if you wanted to give some information, for example, an alert message in the Slack, we used to go with the alert symbol. I try to alert it that way so that it will be more easily catchy. That's the reason. So we have to be more focused on that. The final one is design accessible form controls. So when I say the design accessible form controls, if you are using the Drupal, so when we design it, when you go for the form validations, if you are not submitting any kind of field and if you submit, say, the node, it will go to the top. It will not tell you where exactly if you are not being customized, like which field is not working as expected. 
So that is what we have to cut the mind. So design and civil commerce like soft money messages, blocker messages, error messages when I'm talking about. When you don't submit it, you will not be able to move further. So that kind of messaging should be more informative so that they can read it out. It's not like a simple one, this field is blank. Why is it blank? That's more important. So we have to confront that bit. So that is the one thing, design accessible form controls. So these are the few tips as part of the empathy designs which we have to consider so that probably we can put into the WTG guidelines to a maximum level of that. So until triple A, I would say. All right, so legal and ethical implications of not prioritizing accessibility in local development. So Americans with Disabilities Act, so they have prohibited the discrimination against the individuals, I would say. So that has been interrupted by some force to apply website and digital platforms. So section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act requires the federal agencies to make their electronic and information technology accessible to people with disabilities, I would say. Failure to comply with this one, 508, results in the legal action and loss of government contracts. So Web Accessibility Directive, that's the other one, WAD, the European Union Web Accessibility, they require the public sector websites, mobile apps, to be very much accessible. So non-complaints with this particular one can lead to legal consequences, including final and legal actions. And the next one is national laws. So many European countries have their own regulations and related to the web accessibility. So for example, if you take the UK, Equality Act 2010, it's there. So which includes provision of digital accessibility. So national cases, uh, so I guess uh, on 2021, there was a legal action has been taken on the dominoes for the same in the Europe as well as in the UK, and they have been paying so much of fines for not being accessible. That was the reason. So the UK Equality 2010, which I just got right now, they have the WTG 2.1 and level AA conformance level to be there. So if you satisfy that, the website is good to go. That's how it is. And apart from that, there are regulations which came into the picture on UK on 2018 as well. So the next one is European Accessibility Act. So as of 28 June 2025, customers will be able to file complaints before national courts or authorities if service or products do not respect the new rules. So we have another 1.5 years to go where we start our rehabbing outside right now. Probably we can end up in getting a good accessibility site within 2025 of June. So we don't have much time to do that as well. So that's something we have to focus on. So apart from that, there are a few laws which is like American Disability Act as I, as I told earlier. And apart from all these, these are, we are really worried about regulations and everything. But let's ensure that we are giving the psychological safety of our own people who work with us. That's most important when it comes to accessibility. So apart from all these, so when we get a demand letter, so when the team is not ready for an accessibility ready, and when we get a demand letter, the settlement would be like around, it's been mentioned in the Google, so I'm not sure, I don't have any data apart from that, but I guess it's fined up to $55,000, and violation is around 1,10,000 for each subsequent violations. So let's ensure that we are sitting in, that we are educating our clients that accessibility is most important we have to consider from the initial phase of the project. So this is something like if you are not doing the prioritizing the accessibility, lawsuits, which I have explained much right now, so individuals with disabilities, they can file a lawsuit against the organizations with websites lacking accessibility, claiming discriminations. The next one is financial penalties, as I told you right now, 55,000, which is really a huge amount. So that's the one thing which we have to focus on. Reputation damage, which cannot be purchased by money, I would say. There might be a huge reputation created for its site, and if you ended up in giving the penalties, penalties would be like a one-time sh one shot, and we can go for a revamp. But getting that reputation again for the same site, it would take much time. So ensure that we are not having any reputation damage. The last one is lost opportunities. You might be using losing the opportunities with the, I would say, government contracts, and might be a higher clients thinking that okay, these people has not considered accessibility. 
So we may end up in paying penalties, so we don't want to do that. So we might lose opportunities in the market as well. So let's ensure that we are sticking to the accessibility and not getting into these stuff. Steps towards complaints. So how you can do that? So right now we have to look at what are the challenges we are facing. If we are not doing it, what trouble we will be into. Now this is something like, let's ensure that we are working towards a complaint. To conduct an accessibility audit, so I was talking about this in the initial phase. So whatever site which you are working, you can refer to this. There is a digital accessibility audit blog which has been written probably, or any other blog which is related to the accessibility audit. You can refer to that and start auditing the current site and check what is the accessibility level, the score which you have for your current site right now. regular testing. So continuously test your site. So when I say the regular testing, one thing we have to ensure is, let us ensure that we are just um, checking with NGOs or let's in ensure that we are recruiting a person who's having the different able uh, skills and then let's get it tested so that we will get more results and it will be more productive. So as a person which we do not have any kind of digital activity, it will be pretty tough for us to include that. So let's ensure that we are having any one or part of the NGO for that and regular testing can be done so that we get more productive for the site. The last one is training. Educate your team on web accessibility best practices. So for the front-end developer, they should be knowing how to keep the heading. As a UX UI designer, you should be telling the customer client that these are the things. And when you get the brand guidelines, so you, the client might be very much sticky saying that, no, no, I need this blue color. That is what my brand color. So let's first check it out whether it goes with the WCG guidelines. That's the first point we have to consider. Second, let's check what is the text we can go for that particular color. That would be the second point, considering the branding guideline color. Third, if that doesn't work so well and you are not able to match the guidelines, let's propose a new color to the client which is related to that particular color. So it should not be a different color, I would say, maybe something like a blue. So something related to that particular blue, we can go and recommend to the client so that it's not going with the color options which you have told. Let's go with this new color, go with the data so it will work out. So these are the things which you have to consider. So that's the training part as well. <coughs> Drupal and accessibility. So Drupal and accessibility now, we have a couple of modules which is being enabled in Drupal, which is easily accessible, we can download it as content modules and you can use it. So there are certain things as like search engine form and presentations, that is one there. And the next one is drag and drop functionality, so that's there. Color contrast and intensity, there is a module for that as well. So image handling, form labeling, removal of duplicate or null tags. So there are a few things which is on the Drupal modules is already available. So I'm going to take some models which we have tested later to that, but not exactly related to this one, I will say. So these are the things which is already there and right now, which we can, on hand, we can use it right now. So to each one of us, let's ensure that our website harmony is every user is part of the tune, which we prefer, which we make. Let's consider that. Prioritize web accessibility and improve your business. So these are the few tools. So Drupal Magic, I would say, modules that makes accessibility a reality. So if you check the first one, accessibility audit. So when we say the accessibility audit, there is a site which is already there and you want to check the score for that and go for the recommendations. So that comes into the picture for the accessibility audit. So there are two modules which can be used for this, editorial level by accessibility checker and a level one. So I'm trying to show that. will be 
applied over here, and if there is any anything to be taken care of, it will be reported over here. And apart from that, this editorial level wide, if you go to the report, so you are able to see the report over here. So content accessibility, results from that particular module will be shown here. So you can run that and you can get the report as well. So the accessibility audit can be used by, I would say, like product manage, managers, QA, developers. Anyone can use it once it's been placed as a content report. So the next one is site builders. So the site builders is something like block, area, landmark, rows. So when I say that, um, if you consider the search, search bar has been placed with a block, right? So if I go to the search bar in the site which I have taken care of, let me show you. something called if I, for example, if I'm trying to play a block, I'm trying to create an indicated block, they have an option to choose it from here and it will be available. So once it is done, they can enable it and they can give the key name as area, for example, search, enter the keyword, that would be the block area name for that particular one. So that is the one thing which you can consider as part of this. And the next one is like, well, apart from that, node link reports, that is for the site builders, I would say. So this node link reports will help you to find out, is there any broken links on the site?
at the top like to change the colors. So this is called steric activity toolbar. You can ch keep trying changing the colors over this particular one. So this is the one which you can try for that. So you can give the different colors. So this is something like a module, I would say, default module is there. But regarding the color, maybe developers can go with the brand colors and try it out. So that is something like which we need to customize it. But this is easily available right now. So these are the few things which we can cover as part of this accessibility modules, I would say. Finally, I would like to conclude by saying that so far we have given the ideas of what's happening with accessibility and how to implement it and everything. Let's ensure that we are putting it up for the actions, so empathy in actions. Let's ensure that our commitment to accessible design is there. So positive brand image, that's the one thing which you get when you are implementing this. Second one is user satisfaction, which is most important for us. And the third one is legal complaints. We are not getting into any troubles by doing this. The last is inclusivity, assistive compatibility. So that's all about session empathy driven design group of prioritized accessibility for end users. Thanks everyone. Thanks. You mentioned legislation from a lot of countries, but you didn't mention India. Does India have any legislation uh, that on, on accessibility? It's a good question. So, yeah, so probably, um, so I would say like, I have to consider the accessibility for the audience over here. I guess we are only the Indians. Probably we might be knowing what's happening. So I need to ensure that what is the information I'm conveying, it should be reachable. So I focused on that part. No worries. Hi, thank you for that presentation. Um, at some point, I missed the name of the tool you were using to do the accessibility check. It was in about the first third of your presentation. Thank you very much. Great presentation. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, I've been using uh, Axe Dev Tools uh, in Chrome uh, as a plugin very successfully. Do you have any other recommendations maybe for uh, other plugins that we can use in Chrome uh, that can work well um, for uh, auditing, for uh, accessibility testing, um, just in browser? Uh, yeah, sure. I think they have already set up an area of using that. Uh, I mean, they have a lot of contents, which is like PDFs and everything is already there. Yeah. So as of right now, we don't have any separate tool which is in the market right now. Up to the Axidev tools, they have established that entire thing. Right. Probably what we can do is like they are getting a paid contract, I would say, for the Axidev right. tools once after you utilizing it. Yeah. So instead of that, uh, we know that we will be getting more clients. So probably we have to try something with the internal tools. Right. With that, what we are experiencing, so that we are not end up and using multi-clients with the Axtev tools. So for an immediate response, we can go for Axtev tools. Right. But if we are planning for a multiple long-term projects, I would say we, it's better for us to pre create an internal tool. Okay, I see. Yeah. Uh, also, I'll just 
uh, take the ne next question. Um, have you worked ever on projects where you have um, automatic, automated accessibility testing on deployments? Yes. Yeah, you do, right? Yeah. 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 So we have an internal framework which is being built up upon that. Right. So something like when you ran that, when you ran that particular script, it right. will give you the reports with the home page and with the unique links which has been covered as part of the sampling. Right. You will get an entire report with like what is the accessibility rate currently with that particular pages and also it will have the graphical representation. So there is a separate framework for that for the automation. Right. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Give a session time for the next persons. See you soon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.